Hey, this is Ian Westerman. I'm the head pro at EssentialTennis.com, where it's my mission to bring passionate instruction to passionate tennis players just like you. And in today's coaching video, we're going to talk about the keys to approaching the net in singles. And I'd like to dedicate this video to TJ, who asked this question on YouTube. And basically, the scenario that he, that he laid out was in singles, he likes to approach, but he's just got no confidence approaching the net right now because it feels like to him every time he gets up there he just gets passed left and right just over and over again and he's, he's had no success. So TJ, three main things that we, we must understand and we must execute correctly if we're going to have any chance approaching the net. Fact of the matter is when we get close to the net, yes we take time away from our opponents, but when we get close to them we have less time to react to their shots as well. So if we don't set things up in our favor, we could actually be giving them the benefit and the advantage instead of us. So let me show you what I'm talking about. First of all, positioning is the first and most important piece of the puzzle here. And I'm just going to diagram quickly. Let's imagine that our, whoops, lost my tennis ball. Let's imagine that our opponent has a forehand over in the deuce side of the court. And they have two very general main targets that they could possibly aim for while trying to hit a passing shot. They could try to go down the line, or let's say that they try for an angle, kind of go for the side T, and they go for an angle target, cross court or down the line, right? Now, if we bisect this angle right in half, see if I can do that relatively closely, you'll notice, TJ, that, well, I'm off a little bit, <laughs> a little bit in this direction, the halfway mark in between these two angles is going to be somewhere right around here when you're a couple of steps inside the, the service line. So when the ball is placed over to your left, if, you're, if you are this player right here, and the ball has gone to your left on the other side, you should be positioning yourself a little bit to the left of the center of the court in order to evenly intercept shots from your opponent to either cover kind of 50-50, the down the line shot or the cross court shot. So that means if the ball gets placed on the other side of the court, you should be placing yourself a little bit to that side of the court. A phrase that I like to use is follow the ball. You should always be following in the direction of the ball when you're at the net. When the ball is to your right, you should be a little bit to the right side of the court. If the ball is to your left, you should be a little bit to the left side of the court. So. With that in mind, TJ, and that's the first and most important thing, you must position yourself correctly because you have little, much less time to react to your opponent's shots than when you're back on the baseline. So that leads us to placement. When you have a, you know, basically a 50-50 proposition, you get a relatively easy shot, let's say a, a backhand on the ad side, you have two, again, very general choices. You can go down the line or you can go cross court. This is why it's kind of a rule of thumb to always approach down the line because you're already on the left side of the court. So if you keep the ball in front of you, it's much less court that you have to cover to put yourself in the right position. If you place your approach here, ideal positioning, all other things being equal, is here. If from that backhand position you hit cross court to approach, now you've got to position yourself instead of here, you've got to position yourself here. And that extra step or two makes all the difference in the world when your opponent is going to hit a passing shot and you don't have a whole lot of time to react to it. So this is why the general rule of thumb of hitting your approach down the line is in existence. It doesn't always mean you should approach down the line. We don't have time to get into every scenario today in this video, but that's why generally speaking, people suggest that you should be hitting your approach down the line. So something to think about there, TJ. Lastly, anticipation. Anticipation is, is huge. When you approach the net, you're kind of declaring to the world, and most specifically your opponents, it's kind of like, all right, here I am. I'm coming up. I'm challenging you right now. Let's see what you got. Let's see what you can come up with to try to win this point. I'm putting myself up at the net. If you don't do something pretty good here, I'm really uh, posing a large threat to you. So you know that they're going to try to come up with something somewhat special on the next shot. If you just stand there and wait for them to hit and then you're reactionary in reply, 
you're going to get passed a lot. You need to pay close attention to your opponent, each individual opponent, figure out what their strengths and weaknesses are. Most players are going to have a favorite direction that they like to hit off of each side. They'll love hitting their forehand, you know, down the line on the run, their backhand, maybe they have a really nice, you know, sharp cross-court angle. Whatever it is, if you're not paying close enough attention to be able to start anticipating what that is and then fine-tuning your positioning to account for that and maybe even sometimes leaning in that direction as they're hitting to anticipate and cut it off, if you're not doing those sorts of things and playing a little bit of cat and mouse game as that approaching player, then you're giving your opponent a lot of opportunities to pass you because you're being kind of passive. <laughs> you're just kind of standing there waiting and being reactionary, and that makes your job at the net very, very difficult. So TJ, hopefully uh, that's helpful to you, and if you've tuned in today, hopefully it's been helpful to you as well. Uh, if you have any comments or questions about this, Leave those down below. Also, please do me a favor and click like if you're watching on YouTube and you've enjoyed this video. And be sure to subscribe to the Essential Tennis YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any future lessons. With that, thank you so much for watching. Take care and good luck with your tennis.